Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. No man comes unto the Father except by him. And Lord, we just thank you for the service. We thank you for anointing upon it. Thank you for every, every mind to be open to the word of God this morning and uh, do a work in us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. And if this time we could have the ushers come forward and take the offering. It's my pr privilege to be able to introduce a long-time friend of mine. <laughs> For 45 years, I've known David. We lived together. We grew gardens together. We prayed together, caused trouble together, had children together. Entered the ministry together. I got a lot of memories with the man who's preaching today. So let's believe God that we're going to leave here with some new memories, all of us. So let's all stand up and let's welcome the ministry gift of Reverend Dave Walker. <laughs> Thank you, Maury. He forgot to say we cut a lot of wood together. <laughs> I would like to know how many cords of wood we cut together, but oh my goodness, the wood we cut together. And uh, it's, it's just been a wonderful journey, tremendous journey that God has put us, put us on together. Amen. And uh, all the wonderful things. Thank you. And I'm so glad you're here <laughs> to introduce me. <laughs> I'm glad I'm here. <laughs> Oh. Well, you know, there's a, there's a, you can be seated. There's a new movie out called The Jesus Revolution. And somebody asked me, uh, are you going to see it? I said, no, I'm in it. <laughs> Somewhere, if they're putting any footage out there, we're there. Maury and I are there. And uh, the, it went from about 1970 to the early 80s. And uh, God kept it going so I would get saved. Because uh, <laughs> I resisted it. You know, there was that bumper sticker, I found it. I hated that bumper sticker. I said, I never lost it. You know, little did I know how lost I was. Uh, the first Good News Festival was 1978 or so at Sunrise Farms. You know where Sunrise Farm is? Up in Burton. That was the first... Good News Festival was Phil Kagey and uh, Honey Tree, uh, other artists, and Judy, my wife, my girlfriend at the time, uh, wanted me to go. And I said, well, are they serving beer? And she said, no. I said, well, I'll drop you off then. <laughs> so I dropped her off, went to the Hickory Lake Tavern over there in Newberry, <laughs> picked her up. The next year, I was a counselor. Because the next year, it was at the um, Burton Fairgrounds, and uh, they made us counselors. You know, you go to that tent and pray with people who need prayer. I'm like, I just, you know, I hadn't been saved six months, I don't think. But, you know, some time between that first one and the second one, we came to the Lord, you know, with Maury and Sue and a whole bunch of other people. It was a wonderful time. You know, I don't study God anymore. He just dazzles me. He just, he's too big to study. He just dazzles me. You know, the, the same God that made, you know, the mountains and the streams and, and the valleys and all the sunrise, he wasn't complete until he made more Levinson. And then he hooked Maury Levinson up with Sue Levinson. And he said, I want to release love to them in this area that's uncontainable. In this area. When you've lived in an area, this community for 40 some years, people know who you are, what you believe. You know? and, and he chose them. He chose you. Everyone in this room, he says, 
this, this creation's not complete until I created you to be part of what I'm doing in all the earth, in all the earth. Uh, we, we started a series last, this month, I'm retired actually, um, from full-time ministry and I just help out at a church. And a uh, wonderful pastor who always does series. So the series was grounded. And she said, I want you to do rooted and grounded in love because I only have one message. You know, about five years ago, I was diagnosed with lung cancer. And uh, when the doctor talked to me about the chemotherapy and the therapy, he said, you know, most people uh, don't last for five years. You know, they can be dead in five years with this type of cancer. So uh, when you hear that kind of diagnosis, as Maury has heard different times, you narrow down the intent of your heart. You know, <laughs> you really narrow down what's important. And, and there's a lot of messages out there. I'm telling you, they're, and they're good messages, wonderful messages. But he narrowed down into my heart the message of love. Because I came out of that generation, that love generation, looking for love in all the wrong places, looking for love in a culture that was hungry for more, more love, real love, true love, and uh, resisting the real thing until his love just overwhelmed me. July 17th, 1979. Hmm. <laughs> You know, when you get older and your testosterone level drops slowly, you cry at everything. <laughs> and you want chocolate. But <laughs> more, you know. <laughs> but it, I just, I mean, it, it was that time. It was the Jesus Revolution. And uh, over the years, I've been through a number of, of revivals, renewals, refreshings, all with different names, and these are the seeds of love that God is just scattering in the earth today. And, and he, you're here, you're alive today to water those seeds. You're here for that purpose. And over the years, you know, um, terms, different terms have taken on different meanings. And uh, you know what I mean. It's it's changed, you know, blown away. Wow. I'm just blown away, <laughs> you know. What does that mean? It didn't mean you exploded, but, you know. I mean, God blows me away. Um, how about goat? I just learned this one, like, you know, a couple of weeks ago. Goat. Maury, you're a goat. The greatest of all times. <laughs> and when I go to the old goat's home, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Woo, where they keep the greatest of all times. <laughs> you know. I mean, that, that's an interesting term. I guess it's in, in sports now. Greatest quarterback, you know, different things. So, uh, GOAT. JP, I just want to say your harmonica playing. Wonderful. I mean, it's just wonderful. The anointing on that is so great. Of course, I came up with a lot of harmonica players, you know. And uh, I love harmonica. But it, thank you for your gift and using that gift. The greatest of all times. So when, when um, they asked me to do this series of Grounded, my, my immediate thought was ground zero. Ground zero. And the term really has changed over the years in its meaning. What would be the first thing you would think of at ground zero? 9-11, right. And um, I, I, I looked it up, and the word means epicenter or central point, um, foundation, core, earth shattering. That's ground zero. And the term really came about in the 19, after World War II when we dropped the bomb on Hiroshima. And the point at where the bomb meets the earth, became known as ground zero. 
but over the years, that changed. Now, I've been to Ground Zero in New York City, and it is a, it is a sobering place. It is a memorial that we should never forget, but we need to forgive. You know, we say we'd never forget, but part of our whole, our whole foundation in Christ is forgiveness. So we need to forgive. I mean, the Japanese obviously forgave us and have become our allies. They have a memorial to the lives lost, but they have worked and reconciled a relationship with us. And I think it's a, it shows really a, what we're all about. See, God wants us to be first responders. First responders go in to find the lost. First responders go in to help those who are wounded. First responders, they're not looking at, you know, who they are, what their affiliation is. They're looking for someone they can save, someone they can help. And God wants us to be those first responders in this hour to those that need us, to those that are broken, to those that are hurting. You know, it, it, it's, it's um, Jesus lays this out, really, in the beginning of his ministry. Like I said, when you have, they kind of give you five years to live in, and thank God, my last two scans have been perfectly clean. Hallelujah. Thank you for all your prayers. And, and the doctor, the oncologist, has moved my uh, next scan out six months. There were always three months, three months, three months. Now it's six months. Whew. Wow. And it's great. Uh, so I had, you know, you narrow yourself down. What did Jesus have? Three and a half years. He had three and a half years to get together a group and to change the consciousness of a people. And here he is in Mark... Um, yeah, Mark, Mark uh, 114, it says, Now after John was put in prison, now there's an old goat. <laughs> Jesus said he was the greatest of all times, the greatest prophet, the greatest. There was none greater than him. And he's in prison, Jesus' cousin, I believe, you know, and he's, he's, I mean, think of the, they're under Roman occupation. The religious are mad at them, okay? And, and he comes out of the gate right here. He says, he says, Jesus came to Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Boom. I mean, he explodes a bomb right there. The gospel of of the kingdom of God. He uses God, and the Jews don't use the name of God. They have another name for God because they don't use the name of God. And he, right out of the gate, he, he just explodes their whole religious thinking and whole world. Boom. I say, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Closer than you think. Closer than you can even imagine. See, they sort of kept God at arm's length because they were, had the spear of God and, and his retribution and his anger. That's the idea he had. Oh. And on this journey that Jesus is on, some of the things really stand out. He makes reference to the kingdom of God between 160 times and 200 times in the Gospels must be pretty important. If I've told you once, I've told you a hundred times. <laughs> Whew, I have seven children. <laughs> so I know that, uh, that story, you know. I mean, hundred, almost 200 times. And here, this is just a side. In 365 times in the Bible, it says, don't be afraid. I thought that was new, cool. 365 times in the Bible. One for every day. If, you, if you're walking in fear, which so many people are, you know, the other revival that's going on, the Asbury revival that's going on, people there, young people are saying, I was delivered from fear by his love. 
by a presence of his love. It delivered me from fear, anxiety, uh, all kinds of stress. He forgave me. He loved me. Oh, my goodness. These are just the seeds that he's scattering across this nation, scattering all over, seeds of his kingdom. Oh, Jesus says, repent. Now, when we think of repent, many of us think of, you know, groveling to the altar in shame. But what he's saying is change your mind. It's the word, um, it's a word meant in awe. It means change your way of thinking. I mean, they had one mindset. Jesus is coming to deliver us from Rome. He's coming as a mighty conqueror. He's going to set us free from Roman occupation. He says, no, I want you to change your mindset. I want to transform how you look at a loving God. I want to transform your thinking, what you think about God and his kingdom. I didn't come to restore a system. I came to create a whole new one that you've never been part of or never seen before that never existed, something totally new. Oh, boom, God's rule, God's rule. Oh, that is so amazing to me. You know, he, he uses the word uh, God and it's sacrilegious. He says, Jesus didn't come to establish a religion called Christianity. You know, there's over 200 denominations in Christianity. <laughs> He didn't come to establish Christianity. He came to establish a new way of living, a new lifestyle, a life-giving way of life. Oh, that's what we were looking for in the 70s. We wanted a new way, and it was him, a new and living way. Oh, he didn't come to proclaim it to those who have the right theology. You know, I always think people challenge me about theology. And Jesus said, he'd never leave me nor forsake me if my theology was right. <laughs> the theology issue, God dazzles me. He dazzles me with what he's doing, with the people he's doing it with. Little old me, little old Maury, us, our small group. You know, it was amazing what he accomplished in a small group. Our, our first meetings were at the Bainbridge Town Hall. Talk about revival. They got the Bainbridge Town Hall in the middle of the afternoon for an aglo meeting by women, okay? And people were there getting saved, baptized in the Holy Ghost. Sue came home speaking in tongues. <laughs> Judy said, Sue's upstairs crying and speaking in tongues. And I, I gotta go up in here. <laughs> oh my, I gotta, I gotta go down there. See what's going on? Went down there. It was a woman's meeting. <laughs> you know? Oh, but they, they loved us. Us long-haired, dirty hippies. <laughs> they loved us. I just wonder, who are the dirty hippies today? Who are the unlovelies today that God wants us to love unconditionally? Who are they? As I see the, the Jesus revolution, what is he, who does he want us to love today? They're unlovely. We were so unlovely. Smoking, living together, in sin. <laughs> Is there any other way to live together? <laughs> you know. Oh my goodness. And they loved us unconditionally. It was a love that won. Love wins. Love never fails. Oh, what is this? What does this look like? What does this look like? Oh, let's turn over to uh, more of Mark. See, the church, church of Jesus Christ should be ground zero for the greatest explosion of love ever recorded on the face of this earth. A, a tsunami of love. A, a, an earthquake of love. We can see what a devastating earthquake can do. But we need to change our mind and see what a positive earthquake, tsunami can do when God's in charge. It's explosion of love. 
uh, and it's supposed to change the, the, the face of the earth. That's what it's called to do, change the face of the earth. And he said to them, the kingdom of God is if a man should scatter seed. I mean, it's an agrarian culture. I mean, they understand what he's talking about. They're farmers, fishermen, farmers, salt of the earth. So he speaks in their terms. How do we speak in this generation's terms? How do we, hallelujah, brother. <laughs> Save that, okay? <laughs> Whew. We need to not speak in our tribal language to a tribe that's outside of our, our language. We need to meet them where they're at and speak the language that they're thinking. Not exclude them, but include them in God's love. He said the kingdom of, of God is if a man should be scattering seed, scattering seed around. In verse 3 he said, to what shall we liken the kingdom of God? What does this look like? See, they have no point of reference. They've seen a corrupt political system, abusive corrupt political system, and they've seen religion, harsh religion, terrible religion. Mm. And he says, I'm going to give you a new reference point. I'm going to change your mind on what a relationship with God really looks like, a living, life-giving relationship with God Almighty. And he said it with a parable. He says, picture this. It's like a mustard seed. Mm. You ever seen a mustard seed? Oh, my goodness. It's the smallest of all seed. It, it, you know, small is good. You know, when I left church after preaching this message, uh, the first Sunday of... I'll get it. <laughs> February. I said, God, I love this message. Would you open a door to preach it again someplace? I want to preach it again. Of course, I'm thinking about, you know, 5,000 people. And <laughs> all those preachers, no matter how old we get, we think big, you know. <laughs> and what happens? Next week, Ron calls me. I'm totally convinced this is what God wants you to hear. Absolutely convinced that he wants you. You know, they said when... When the hearts are ready, the teacher will come. These people's hearts were ready to hear a different message, to hear a different approach to reaching God, to touching God. We have a generation out there that's crying out for more of God. They're crying out. They're crying out for peace, for joy, for love. And they're looking like we did in all the wrong places. You know, 1969, I, I flew to Europe on Atlantic Airlines. I bought a VW bus in, in, um, in Holland, Amsterdam. I drove for a whole year around the whole country, visiting 10 countries, camping the whole time, looking for love. With a whole myriad of other people, other hippies, everywhere. Everywhere. Sitting around campfires discussing where's the love, where's the real love, where's the real peace, where's the real joy, where is it? Hungry for anything. And I found it in my own backyard. <laughs> oh my goodness. I found it in my own backyard. And God was so patient with me. So loving, he held over that revival <laughs> to convince me this is the real thing, Dave. This is the real thing. This is the real peace. This is the real joy. And we had such a wonderful community in the transference from, you know, when we were living on Valley Road together, seekers, and we, we found the Lord and, and grew together, and oh my goodness. It, it was just unforgettable times, and I want the young people today to have unforgettable times in the presence of the Lord, like he's shown us. So what was he like in the kingdom? It says, when this seed, when this seed is sown, and that's what we're called to do, we're called to be purveyors of love, sowers of love, because it's a kingdom of love. If God is love, then it's a kingdom of love. That's what it is. 
The kingdom of his dear son is the kingdom of love. It's, it's the kingdom. It, it, said, it said when it is sown, it grows and becomes greater than, boom, an explosion of love. Greater than all the herbs and all the shoots out of large branches. Everybody's invited. It's inclusive that it says so, so that the birds of the air may nest under its shade. There's over 10,000 species of birds on the earth. God's big. God's able. God is inclusive. God wants all of us. God wants all of us. Mm. If God is love, he wants to, he wants to build and establish a movement, an explosion of love, of forgiveness, of faith that will never be forgotten. I'll never forget it. Never. July 17, 1979, 737 in the evening. <laughs> Whew. Walked in, hung over, broken, and he loved me. He I you know, I said, why didn't they tell me this? <laughs> you know, I didn't hear it. I couldn't hear it. I heard religion, you know. In this, in this, there's room for all to rest, rest. I say rest under the shade of this tree of life that he's provided. It's huge. They understood what he's talking about. They're from this culture. Like a seed, a seed of love, a seed of hope, a seed of faith, of a seed of enlightenment, a seed of enlightenment to rise above where we're sitting. Those that sat in darkness saw a great life. They rose above and they were enlightened. Oh, it says set your affections on things above. Set your affections on things above. Don't be preoccupied with all the distractions that are out there on a, 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 a basis, continual basis. You know, it's amazing, you know, I go into homes, different homes, uh, in my part-time work, where people want us to help organize their homes with an organizer. Every home has a huge TV on all day long. And they're watching one thing or the other, Fox or, you know, or CNN or all day long. I don't know. I mean, that information is out there. And then they give me 20 minutes to change people's mind. You know what I mean? At the end of the week. After they've been immersed in fear, in anger, in separation, in disaster. 24-7, seven, seven days a week, and we get one day to change their mind. <laughs> Woo. But don't take too long. <laughs> you know, I mean, as I was ready to preach this at four o'clock this morning, <laughs> you know, it's nap time now. Uh, you know, um, God said, "Put on the garment of praise, for the spirit of heaviness." That's, it, that's ex exactly what you did. Why do we have worship up front to break that off you? Because we're all carrying it in. The cares of this world, the problems, the money problems, oh, not that again. Oh, the car problems, oh, no, the car again. You know, you know what I mean? I mean, I'll be 78, <laughs> right, this, this March. And we go, still go through it. You know, when's it going to be over? It's not going to be. <laughs> oh, but we have his grace. We have his peace. We have his love. We have what it takes, as we sang this morning, to get through, to rejoice. There's nothing better. Now, I love that time alone with him this morning, but there's nothing better than this. To be with people of like precious faith, believing that love never fails. Love never fails. And acting it, sowing those seeds in this community that, that is so... We're so blessed to be in. Oh, it still blows me away. So we had that Jesus revival, 1970, 1980. 
Then, you know, another one I was hooked up with, the Toronto Revival. Every revival has controversy. Christianity alone has controversy, okay? It's controversial. Now we have this Asbury Revival. How wonderful, how gracious of God to, to bring us this, this, this love, this, this time. It just dazzles me how much he cares. Set your affections on things above. Oh, it says, and, and with many other parables, he spoke the word to them, and they were able to hear it. Why? Because he spoke their language. He spoke their language. We need to know how to speak people's language. That's what we do. All right, let's see. Where else are we going here? We're going over to, to Luke. In Luke, here he is again. Luke 5, 17. And he came down with them and stood on a level place. Love is a great leveler. It levels the playing field, folks. It breaks all, all the labels that we put on people to not love them. Love is the leveler. It levels the playing field, folks. You know, I don't know what's in people's backgrounds that make them act the way they do. I don't know why they're acting out in the way they are. But love is the leveler. And I'm called to love them right where they're at. Because that's what they did to me. They loved me right where I was at. Right where I was at, loved me. He stood at a level place with a crowd <laughs> of his disciples and a great mixed multitude. It says right there, a great multitude of people from Judea, from Jerusalem, from the seacoast of Tyre and Sidon, and they, and who came to hear him and be healed of their diseases. It wasn't just the church he was healing. It's out, the people that are out of reach, out of our reach, <laughs> you know, because of our own prejudices and anger and frustration. Well, bless God. Hope they get what they deserve. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's not God. That's, that, that he shows a mixed multitude. That means Romans, <clears throat> you know, uh, Pharisees, Sadducees. All, the whole mess was there. Hungry for what he had to offer. Hungry for this message. A great multitude. And from the seacoast of fire inside and they came to hear as well of those who were tormented with unclean spirits, and they were healed. You want to see healing? <laughs> Ooh, I do. Raise your level of love. It comes from love. It doesn't come from knowledge. Knowledge puffs up. It doesn't come from right interpretation, because they don't care about our interpretation. They're confused by our interpretation, because it's inconsistent many times with love. They come for love for joy, for peace. That's what they come. And it says the whole multitude sought to touch him. They sought to touch him. And it, because power went out of him. Power, power. Woo! An explosion of power, dunamis power went out from him. And the whole multitude sought it. And when he lifted up his eyes towards his step, he says, blessed are the poor, for yours is the kingdom. Whew. Not the most spiritual, the poor in spirit, the, those are, are, are just poor in every way. Whew. It's not us poor no more anymore. It's the whole cosmos. That's how big God is. Look over in Luke 6. Luke 6. Here, <clears throat> this is the core of the kingdom action. You want more miracles? If we are serious about changing the world and not just about what we're against, if we're about training ourselves to move in the opposite spirit of the world, that's what changing your mind is. When you see something, you don't judge it according to the world. You judge it according to kingdom value. 
To most people, I had no value because of how I looked. To kingdom people, I had much value. And they showed it. And they loved me. To train ourselves, that we're walking in the Spirit is training ourselves because we need to be trained in this because our first reaction is to fight, flee, anger, frustration, which is stimulated by media. It's not our first reaction to love, to include, to forgive, to be merciful, to be generous. It's not. Self-preservation is not the kingdom point, okay? It just is not. Self-preservation. Now, I'm not telling you you can't protect yourself or protect your country. I'm just saying train yourself to be a first responder in a new response to things. Train yourself through the word right here. Bless those who curse you. Praise for those who spitefully use you. What? To him who strikes you on one cheek, offer the other. And from who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. Is this to Jesus? Boom. I mean, this is explosive. Give to everyone who asks of you. And from him who takes away your goods, do not ask them back. Radical. Radical change of mind. Radical change of mind. But if you love those who love you, what credit is it? Don't even sinners love those who, who love them? And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those from whom you have hoped to receive, back what credit is to you? For even sinners do it. And receive twice as much back. But, oh, I love the buts in the Bible, don't you, Maury? <laughs> Oh, but love your enemies. Whew. That'll change some thinking. <laughs> Menta Noah, repent. The kingdom of God is hand. I found a new way of living. I found a new life divine. <laughs> Whew. Yes. Love your enemies. Do good and lend, hoping for nothing returned. And in your reward will be great. You will be sons and daughters of the Most High, for he is kind to the unthankful and evil. Therefore, be merciful, just as your Father also is merciful. Judge not. Woo! Judge not. Wow. It didn't say discern not. You can have discernment, and hopefully your discernment will train you to move in the right spirit. See? It's elevating. It's elevating. It says, condemn not. Whew, I'm glad I don't have to condemn people. I'm glad we have God that's big enough to do that on his own without my help. <laughs> you know, it's up to God. Sort it out, God. I don't have enough discernment. It's too big for me. It's beyond my reach. It's too high for me. And he says, and you shall not be condemned. I like that part. Forgive and you will be forgiven. I love that part. <laughs> I want to walk in forgiveness. I want to be forgiven. Oh, forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity and heals all your diseases. I've meditated on this scripture for five years. It was my mantra. Sitting with chemotherapy going through my veins, you know, he heals all my sicknesses. Mm. Focused on how much he loves me. He crowns me with loving kindness and tender mercy. There's a crown right on your, your head. I can see it. It's God's love. Right on. He crowns you. I don't even know your name. Receive it. Receive it. Receive that crown of, of love and loving kindness that, that he puts on each one of us. We're all, in what we sang about being royalty this morning, he crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercy. Whew. Receive it. Whew. Receive it. It heals your body, heals your mind, heals your soul, changes your heart. Whoo! Mm. Wow. Where was I? Be merciful. Judge not. Don't condemn. Forgive. Give, and it will give unto you. Good measure. Press down. Shaking together. Running over. Men will give unto your bosom. Whoo! 
the other day in church, I said, anybody hear the Lord? And who? <clears throat> I get out of breath, half a lung, you know. He says, uh, did anybody hear about the Lorna Dune shortage? There's a shortage of Lorna Dunes out there. <laughs> it's pretty serious. Um, I mentioned it at church. What do I get next week? Lorna Dunes from everybody. <laughs> wow. See, that's, that, that's who we are. That's who we are. More he has poured out <clears throat> more help to me over the years than I can even imagine. You know, just, it's broken, he can fix it. He can fix it, willing to look at it. Oh my goodness, what a blessing. For with the same measure that you meet, it will be measured back unto you. Folks, it was not love stored up, but love poured out that opened the kingdom. Not love stored up. Don't hold back. Don't hold back from anybody. Deserved, not deserved, poured out. It opens the kingdom of heaven for those who are in dire need of it. Oh my goodness. Ground zero, core teaching. Paul knew this. He's sitting in prison, and we're going to end with this out of the Passion Translation. Um, Paul knew this. He's sitting in prison. It would be like Ron not being here because he's in jail for his faith down in the county jail. What would it mean to the congregation? There would be a, a stir. There would be, you know, fear. There would be all kinds. And he writes, he writes from jail. Mm. My dear friends, my dear friends, I pray that you will remain strong and not be discouraged or ashamed by all that I suffer on your behalf. For it is your glory. So when I think of the wisdom of his plan, I kneel humbly in awe before the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah. I want you to receive this today. You know, I know we commission people in different ways. I'm going to commission, commission you to scatter those seeds of love in every situation you come against, come into in this 40 days before Easter when we celebrate love poured out. That's what we're celebrating, folks. Not love withheld, love poured out unto death. Love poured out. Mm. The perfect father of every father and child in heaven and earth. And I pray that he would pour out, I'm praying it this morning, over you. The unlimited riches of his glory and favor until supernatural strength floods your innermost being with his divine might and explosive power. Whew. The power of love. His explosive power. Oh, ground zero for what, you're ground zero for what God wants to do in this community. You're ground zero. You come in and can change the whole spiritual atmosphere of Auburn Corners. <laughs> Woo! Oh, just receive it, just receive it. Pour it out. Oh, then by constantly using your faith of Christ will be released deeper inside you. And the resting place of his love will become the very source and root of your life. Whew. Love will be rooted, rooted and grounded in love, providing you with every secure foundation that grows and grows and grows. Grows and grows. This is his desire for his church. He's not praying to get set free from prison, to be understood better, to get a fair trial. <laughs> oh, the beatings would stop. No, he's praying for his church. He's praying for you. And this prayer goes through the ages. It's the same prayer for us right now. 
to be commissioned to love. Then as your spiritual strength increases, you will be empowered to discover what everyone, everyone wants to experience, the great magnitude of the astounding love of Christ in all dimensions. Above what we can even ask or think. Beyond measure. Beyond measure. Oh my goodness. Hmm. How enduring and inclusive this love is. Endless, beyond measure, beyond academic knowledge. Oh, we put such an em emphasis in these days in academic knowledge. I've stopped studying God. I'm just dazzled by him. I am dazzled by what only he can do in people's lives. Oh, my goodness. Endless love. Endless love, beyond measure, beyond academic knowledge. This extravagant love pours into you. It's pouring into you right now. Right now, pouring into you right now. If you're open to it, it's just pouring into you. Oh, my gosh, I can't do that. I can't do that, Dave. Of course you can. I can't do it either. The Holy Spirit is there to do it. I'll give you a comforter to come alongside and help you do it. You can't do it on your own. You can't love the unlovelies. He gives us the spear. Boom! Fire and wind. Whew. To fill us with this love. And we lose our way. We get frustrated and angry. And we forget what the foundation is. The rock. What we're building our house on. Oh my goodness. And I don't blame you because it's scary out there. Endless, beyond measure. This love pours out unto you and you are filled to overflowing with the fullness of God. Mm. Wow. This is rising. This is love rising above. I know the circumstances are tough. The news is tough. It's all tough. Don't turn it on first thing in the morning. Spend some time with the Lord. Show, show, let him show you his way. Let him show you his kingdom. Oh my goodness, the kingdom of his dear son. This is a love rising above thought or what you think you know. It's enlightenment. Above thought, set your affections on the fullness of love. Love will grow in every direction. The Father sent Jesus to establish his kingdom of love on this earth and fill us with the Holy Spirit of love that we can make disciples of love. It's an explosion of wind and fire, as you see in Acts. Mm. A mighty, rushing wind, uncontrollable, a wind and fire. Let's pray. Whew. Heavenly Father, I am more than grateful, Lord, for you just sending me out this morning uh, as I prayed to these people, Lord, to receive this commission. It's, it's the great commission. It's the great commission to love beyond what we even think. Ask or think, Lord, it, it is the great commission. So we just thank you for the anointing on these people, this group, this group that's big enough to save the entire region, Lord, if they would just release that love. So we thank you for them, and we ask your blessing upon them. In Jesus' name, amen.